Hello Reading Zone, my name is Jennifer Killick and I am the author of a few different book series including the Alex Sparrow series, the Crater Lake series and my most recent series which is called Dreadwood. Um, most of my recent books are horror comedies. So today I would like to talk to you a little bit about my newest book which is called Flock Horror. It is the third book in the Dreadwood series. So to introduce you to the series first, Dreadwood is the story of a group of year seven students. Um, they all go to a secondary school called Dreadwood High. At the beginning of the first book, Angelo, Hallie, Naira and Gustav are all in a Saturday detention. So the story starts when they get to school for this Saturday detention because they've all done something wrong. Uh, they're not friends with each other. They don't like each other. They don't really know each other. Um, and they just want to get through the day, get the detention done and then never have anything to do with each other again. But the detention soon turns into something quite different. So they find out that each one of them made a mistake, made a bad choice at the beginning of year seven. They thought nobody knew about it except themselves. Um, they thought it was done and gone, but somebody was watching and somebody wants revenge. So it's not a coincidence that they're all in this detention together. And then they have to survive this detention locked in the school with a really creepy mutated creature uh, underneath the grounds of the school trying to burrow up and drag them down to their deaths. Uh, so it's a bit kind of like the game The Floor is Lava where they can't step on the ground. Every time they step on the ground they're in terrible danger. So that's the first Dreadwood book. Um, the third one is the one that's just coming out, Flock Horror. So I thought I'd read you a little bit of it now so you can get the idea of what they're like. And it's from the perspective of Angelo who's our main character. At this point in the story, it's quite near the beginning, it's 2am, Angelo's dad has had, have, had to leave their flat for a medical emergency, so Angelo is in charge of his baby brother, Raph. I go into the kitchen for a glass of water, the tap creaks as I turn it on, the sudden sound making my heart lurch in my chest, I hate myself for being jumpy. I knock back the whole glass while I'm still standing at the sink and refill it. The cool tiles under my feet and the water that splashes onto my arms as it bounces off the glass from the tap are taking some of the heat out of my body. My heartbeat slows. I close my eyes and leave the tap running for a minute. Hallie would kill me for wasting water, but right now it feels like the only thing that's keeping me calm. I drink the second glass of water, fill up again and then turn off the tap with another creak. It takes a moment for the water to stop pouring, slowing to a trickle, then a rapid sputtering. Finally, it settles into a slow drip, the heavy droplets thunking into the metal sink every couple of seconds. It sounds much louder in the quiet of night than it does in the day when I barely notice it. My thoughts turn to what I can do to fill the time until Dad gets back. I don't want to wake Raph, so I settle on watching TV with subtitles on. I've been trying to fit in as many animal documentaries as I can over the past few months, hoping that if the latchets come back with a new genetically tweaked creation, I'll already have the knowledge to be able to identify it maybe work out its weaknesses. In November, the Latchet sent giant spiders to attack me, Na Naira, Hallie and Gus while we were on a weekend detention. We'd all hurt their granddaughter Colette and they thought we deserved a worse punishment than a Saturday in school with each other. When we walked through the gates of the start of that detention, we really didn't get on. Hallie was basic, basically a massive nagging mouth on legs. Naira was annoyingly perfect and thought she was way better than the rest of us. Gus was more random than a duck in the desert and destructive as a wildfire. And me? I guess I was a moody loner who didn't care about anyone or anything. At least that's what I wanted people to think. We survived just, became friends. We made things up to Colette and hoped that would be the end of it. But in March, the latchets came back, complete with creepy masks and brain-biting parasitic worms that made us all act like crazies and play a latchet-created game called Flinch. Again, we survived. Again, only just. But they still want to hurt us, and they want Colette to join their unhinged family. We live with a constant fear that the latchets aren't going to give up until they've got what they want. Me, Colette, Gus, Naira and Hallie, now closer, stronger, have all been doing what we can to prepare for when they come back. Researching wildlife, genetic science and old nursery rhymes. We've even been trying to get fitter. Naira, Colette and I go running a lot. Hallie, being Hallie, prefers fighting to running, so she's taken up kickboxing. Gus persuaded his parents to buy him some gym equipment for the garage. Now he talks about his growing pecs and guns far more often than we'd like. I'm in the hallway lost in thought when suddenly I freeze. Something's changed. The flat is still dark and still. The only sound is the dripping tap. It's dripping faster again now, the regular thump of water into the sink, broken by sudden bursts of fast tapping. 
I go back to the kitchen to see if I can turn it off tighter, but as I walk towards it, I see that it's hardly dripping at all. It feels like everything stops, except for the sound. My heartbeat, my breath held back so that I can listen. The tapping isn't coming from the sink, or even the kitchen. It's coming from somewhere else in the flat. A shrill voice screams from the bedroom I share with Raph. Angelo! I leap towards the cry. Angelo! Raph yells again. I grab the handle and throw the door open, every part of my body tingling with panic and dread. I see Raph standing in the middle of the room, his face pale, his eyes wide with fear. Raph! I say, skidding onto my knees, grabbing him and holding him in a tight hug. He's shaking. What is it? He points at the window where the curtains are open, just a crack. There's a monster outside. So the monster in Flock Horror, you can probably guess from the title and the cover, there are some clues there. And lots of my Dreadwood monsters I base on real life animals. There's a species of bird in the Galapagos Islands called vampire finches, which as you can probably guess, uh, survive by drinking the blood of other living creatures. So in each Dreadwood book, you can expect to find a different creepy creature. Um, you can also expect to find a different nursery rhyme because I love to take things that are kind of wholesome from our childhood and twist them around a bit to make them really sinister. So Dreadwood is inspired by nursery rhymes, by childhood games uh, and by creepy creatures. Um, and it's a horror comedy because those are the stories that I like best. I love a story that jump scares you, that's just the right amount of scary, um, but also really, really makes you laugh. So if that so sounds like something you might like, I hope you give them a try and I hope you enjoy them. Thank you so much. Bye.